morning. <laughs> you haven't seen me with this beanie on for a bit. Had a nice stay at the hut last night. Experienced that. I wanted to experience it at least once. Really nice food. A lot of people. I'd say at least a hundred people were staying there. Maybe more. Everybody seemed really nice. Good conversation. Uh, like I said, good food. Could have slept a little better. Some people don't understand what the red light on <laughs> their headlamps are for. <laughs> uh, nice lake there. That's the lakes of the clouds. But now it's time to get to work. About 6.30 in the morning. It's chilly. About 35 degrees. I don't know if it's 35 where I am or it's going to be about 35 up top. But, uh, it might be nasty up there. It's calling for 40 mile per hour winds with gusts up to 55. Which, that's bad. but Or not fun at least. But it could be much worse. Uh, it's about, like I said, 35 degrees. That makes the wind chill about 20 to 30. Hopefully it's not so strong when I can barely move. <laughs> um, I had my puffy on, but then I decided to put the rain jacket back on. As it is drizzling right now. So I'll be constantly getting wet this whole time. Don't want my puffy getting soaked. So that's what's going on. <laughs> Climbing Mount Washington as we speak. The highest peak in the whites, the highest peak in North in New Hampshire, and North Hampshire. <laughs> and notoriously known for the world's worst weather. It's August, my friends. And it's gonna be sleeting up top. You gotta love it. <laughs> Thank you for showing me the way, but you're still just a Karen. <laughs> rocks all of a sudden have gotten quite a bit slipperier. I had to slow down to say that. <laughs> Goodness. Uh, it's all this green moss and stuff here. On the rocks, it definitely makes it more slippery. And it's obviously very wet right now. I don't really know how far I've went up yet. 
probably about halfway up. I'm not sure. <laughs> Haven't looked at that yet because everything is wet, including the phone. Probably going to have to put the phone away and not really do too much recording here. As, uh, have it, I have it stored away in a dry spot, but it's just so humid and wet and misty that it continues to be wet. But anyways, it's a lot of the same climbing these rocks. And it uh, looks like up here it's not quite as green and mossy, possibly. I don't know, maybe it is, I don't know. <laughs> Those few rocks weren't, but we're back to green again. So just taking my time getting up to the top to put it in a bag. <laughs> oh, those big green slanted rocks. They just kept getting worse and worse. And then I realized something. This doesn't feel right. I looked at my map and I'd walked a half a mile onto another trail. Following the Karens, because as you can see, there's Karens all over the place. But... <laughs> there the thing that gave it away is it just kept getting more green and bigger rocks and I know that the AT from what I've heard isn't quite as bad on Washington going up because it's just uh, it's a little more smashed down because people obviously use this trail a lot I don't know I'll have to uh, experience that myself here for the next half a mile that I went on the wrong trail. <laughs> but the thing that really gave it away is it just felt like I wasn't going up a whole lot. <laughs> it felt like I was going gradually or flat. And I know I still have quite a bit of elevation to go, uh, at least 600 or so. And it just wasn't doing the trick for being as far as I was. <laughs> My goodness. It's the second time I've done that in two days, went down the wrong trail. Uh, this one was not my fault. I was following the Karens, and I didn't realize, I mean, okay, it was my fault, because there's a sign right there for the intersection, and I walked right by it. I might have been doing a, a video clip or something. I will admit, I have a lot on my mind right now. Very heavy heart. have uh, got some bad news yesterday, and it's weighing on me pretty good. So, uh, this is very therapeutic climbing the mountains, but... It's still heavy on me and my mind is racing. So uh, that might be part of it too. All I know, rookie mistake. Not something I would normally do and I've done it twice in two days. <laughs> I guess I just wanted more of Mount Washington, that's all. <laughs> Getting really close to the summit and the wind is not too bad right now. I feel gusts maybe go up to 20 once in a while and that's about it. So hopefully it stays that way up at the summit. <laughs> I don't really know if it, because this is known for the worst weather in the world because of several reasons, there are like three notches on the mountain, somehow that sucks in uh, different fronts. Then you got the warm air meeting the cold air. It's just the perfect storm here on this mountain. I think the record is like 230 miles an hour of wind up top here. And uh, like, I forget what it is, like 120 below zero for temperature obviously that part isn't happening today but it's gonna be like 20 wind chill so I'm not sure it's not too windy and I'm kind of wide open here so might get lucky today but getting really close to the summit see all the top now they have a blaze <laughs> two miles up this way this trail by the way even though it's steeper and a bigger climb definitely easier than whatever that other one was it was so slippery couldn't get a good grip on anything this one's much better for you to grip these type of rocks here. As you can see, there's not much green moss on them. Those other ones were covered, and those just get slimy. All right, y'all. See you
windy around here. Still not too bad. Standing on the summit. Washington, the highest point of New Hampshire, the highest point of the White Mountain Range, and the home of the worst weather in the world. And Mount Washington is in the bag. So here I am in Gorham, New Hampshire, um, staying at the Roadway Inn after getting off the trail today uh, to dry out and uh, just get a little rest before I go back to the trail in the morning. Uh, it's not a cheap motel like it should be. Roadway Inns are usually 40 and 50 bucks throughout the rest of the country. Not here in Gorham, New Hampshire, and this is one of the, uh, if not the uh, cheapest motel in the area, for sure. Um, but a couple things happened today, uh, you know, since the last video clip you had, uh, so kind of explain what happened. Uh, Jeff or Mount Clay, Jefferson and Adams, which are the next three summits after Mount Washington, were all on blue blazes. I ended up going right by those and just doing the AT today. Uh, reason being is the weather. Simply put, it was dangerous out there. Uh, I did do all the blue blazes yesterday to get all those summits. I did not today. Uh, it was an executive decision uh, to keep on going. I did, however, go over Mount Madison and then the descent down uh, into Pinkham Notch. Uh, then when I got picked up, we got brought here to Gorham, New Hampshire. Uh, but a uh, reason you don't really have much video clips today is real simple. Um, <laughs> it's a couple reasons, actually. The weather was horribly bad. At Mount Washington, I'm sure you could start seeing the fog and raindrops on the lenses. My phone was soaked. It was soaked. Uh, and it just kept getting worse and worse because the wind really picked up at Washington. So I couldn't even get my phone out and get it to turn on like 90% of the time. I was going blind on on maps and everything. Good thing everything is well marked. So I knew where I was going at least since I was on the AT. But uh, otherwise, I would have had to find a way to get some shelter or something to get, you know, be able to open up the phone. Um, anyway, uh, it was really bad on that aspect. My, my pants, my backpack, everything was wet. There was nowhere I could put the phone where it would dry out. It was just soaked all day. Uh, so I needed to get down to about 3,000 feet before it started drying out a little bit and uh, was able to, uh, you know, at that time, start drying out myself. Uh, and of course, when you're descending off uh, Mount Madison, it is kind of tricky and a little stressful. So blood pressure goes up, temperature kind of stays up, but it goes down quite a bit from climbing uh, just because you're descending at that point. Even though you're going to a warmer area, the descension doesn't work your heart as much. So it starts getting colder and you really start feeling exactly how cold you are, which can be pretty dangerous. Uh, I'll get to more on that in a second. The other thing, though, is uh, even without that, there wouldn't have been a whole lot of video clips today just because I wasn't into it. Uh, and I know that probably upsets some people, but, you, you know, you're just going to have to get over it. Because at the end of the day, I don't really care what people think I should do on my videos my channel, my videos. I'm not meaning to sound cold or mean, but at the end of the day, this is my journey and I share my journey with you to inspire, to motivate, to help you live vicariously, to help you see the trail, to help you plan for possible through life. Whatever, whatever your reason is, that's great. But at the end of the day, let's not forget it's my journey that I'm sharing with you. A lot of people think I owe it to them to show certain things. And I'm sorry, today was a me day. It was all about me. 
Uh, and the reason I say that is because I, I think I mentioned it earlier in a video. I, I got some some news yesterday that just wrecked my my heart and my mind, and uh, I was I was struggling quite a bit. Uh, it was obviously stressful with the weather, but I was struggling within that, and I, I didn't want to have to add more stress on by pulling the phone out, wiping it down, trying to figure out how to get it to work, and blah 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 blah. I just needed to go inward and focus on me and bringing peace to my mind and heart and body and my breathing, my heart rate, everything. It was about me being as healthy as I could out there and being as little stressed as possible. Uh, so that's what I had to do today. I apologize that I wasn't able to show more clips, but you didn't miss much. Uh, it all looked like Mount Washington, just rain sideways, wind blowing. Probably wouldn't heard much of anything I said with as high as that wind was getting at times. Um, yeah, so, uh, I apologize, not that I didn't have more video, but that I wasn't able to show you more of what I showed, uh, but I had to take, I had to take that time for me today. There's going to be some great views starting tomorrow. Once again, still have 320 miles left, I believe, uh, of this great trail and there's a lot of beauty coming up and uh, I believe it's going to be a little clearer for the next couple days. So that's a good thing as well. Um, there was, it was, it was dangerous out there. I mean, the wind... The rain, the low temperatures, like down in the mid 30s, up high, wind pushing 40 and 50 at times, the cold rain that was probably mixed with sleeks, it was really stingy at times. It, it was pretty dangerous. Slippery rocks could get hurt pretty bad. Uh, there was actually a gentleman last night uh, that I heard that passed uh, around Mount Washington. And, uh, Rumors are it was from hypothermia, which I 100% believe it was cold. And that's when it started getting really rainy when I got to that hut. Uh, it was a good call if it rained for quite some time after that. And that's exactly how I woke up this morning, cold and rainy and windy. So what do I have to say about that is it's real, people. It's dangerous out there. And it's not just the whites. Just because the whites are exposed at top, there's hundreds, if not thousands of mountains just in the U.S. alone, that are exposed at the tops, and then the mountains, and more than four and five and six thousand feet. No matter where you are, you got to be careful. It's not just a hypothermia; it's any kind of fall, any kind of elevation, anything with obstacles, rocks, branches. It's ah, uh, people don't understand sometimes. I don't think how dangerous it can be. If you don't know what you're doing, study and find out what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, take someone who does know what they're doing. Don't take this lightly. It doesn't take much to end up on the wrong side of the dirt. I say that from the bottom of my heart. I know I push life to the brink and the edge, but I'm still very cautious when I do it. I still do the safe thing as much as I can. I implore you to do that because it's just a horrible thing when you go out there and you might never come back if you don't know what you're doing and you're going into those kind of conditions and you're not prepared for it. So be smart people. If you want to do this kind of thing, surround yourself with people that know what they're doing and learn from be a sponge. That's how I started when I first started through hiking. Same thing when I started hiking, when I climbed mountains. Anyway, I'm rattling, rambling, not rattling, I'm <laughs> rambling. Uh, again, I apologize there wasn't more clips today, but uh, there will be more clips starting tomorrow, but I definitely needed that time inward. And uh, I appreciate your patience and knowing that I'm going to have moments, very few and far between, but I'm going to have moments where I just need to go in for the day inward into me and reflect and let me be at peace in nature as much as possible, especially in today's conditions. But before I go and see you all in the morning, live life and Mount Madison is in the bag.